I have a guest with me today. And uh, man, they're going to share it. And we, it's going to be a little different today. We're going to really talk about the educational space. So some of y'all parents, you got questions, right? Put it in the chats, man. This is someone been in education for a long time. And I'm going to bring her in. And I am going to let her introduce herself to you. And uh, if you got questions throughout the time, make sure you ask, man. And and I'm really going to let, I'm going to try to be quiet as much as I can. You know, I love to talk, right? But I'm going to try to be quiet. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Let them know who you are and, and what qualifies you to even talk about education. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pierre. Uh, my name is Kylie Elizabeth. I am also going by the Virtual So Educator. I am the CEO and owner of Virtual Show Education Consulting Services um, that I started out here in Arizona. Um, I've been in the education field, I would say over 10 years, um, 10 years plus, a very wide range. Um, I use the term both virtual so in my consulting business because by definition, that just means very well-rounded, somebody that's skilled in a lot of areas. So I kind of feel like that really defined me and my educational journey. Um, I do have a bachelor's in vocal music. Um, I was studying bu uh, music education, and I also have a master's in education with a focus on curriculum and instruction and administrative leadership. Um, I've been in the classroom, like I said, over 10 years for varying um, areas. I started off teaching driver's education, which is always fun to get behind the wheels with, you know, those fun 16, 15, 14 year olds sometimes. Um, and then I moved into um, long term subbing and I had the pleasure to teach culinary arts for seven years. My grandmother ran a catering company uh, for a long time, so made me qualified to teach it at the high school. And that kind of led me in uh, the career that I'm in right now um, as a uh, administrative leader in career and technical education. So um, I'm really all over the place. I have children uh, that are both eight and 11, um, just kind of personal. They both have, are in special education, so I know a lot um, around that area as a parent um, and as an educator. Um, and I also ran um, a small startup charter here in Arizona for a K-8 uh, micro school, as they were called. So I'm, again, all over the place. And that's just a little bit on my background. Um, Hold on. My I'm, I'm going to back up real quick right here because, I, you know <laughs> yes. what, let me get my qualifications, right? <laughs> I, I have a master's in Hood University and mm -hmm. I have a GED, right, that I got mm -hmm. at 37 years old, 35, 37, one at 37. Right. Them are my qualifications. This is why I can talk about what I talk about. I just wanted to throw that out there because she hit me with all these masters. I'm like, yo, hold on. Like, yo, slow down. Right. But I love it, though. But no, let's uh, let's let's have there were some things we talked about. And uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you wanted to have a conversation and it was it was get around instant gratification. So um, I like it. I, I like it. When I heard it, I instantly my mind started racing and I started thinking. And you see my question to you is you talking about students, you talking about teachers, you talking about parents, because I think that they all um, they all have it right. They all feel like they want instant gratification. If you're the parent, you want whatever you're going through with your student resolved right now. You want the problem fixed right now. Um, if you're a student, you you want your results right now. You don't want to take your time to put in your years of, of being educated and then go get what you want. You feel as though it can be, it should be right now. Um, and then teachers, right? Teachers want to fix problems with students right now. Like I, mm -hmm. we don't have time to wait. Like I, like it needs to be fixed today, not throughout the school year. Right. So there, there's so many, so many places to touch on this. Um, go ahead. I, I want to get your insight when you, when you talk about instant gratification in education yes. at this moment, what is that to you? Yes, um, definitely. So that has been a big topic, um, again, like you pointed out, in all of the different um, stakeholders, as we'll say, in education, regardless of who they are. And I kind of approach this topic um, just looking at my own children, um, specifically my eight-year-old son. And uh, so my son, um, he is autistic. Uh, he is high functioning on the autism spectrum. And a lot of people are like, oh, I didn't even know he was autistic, you know? Um, and, uh, and a lot of people, it's really hard to just say, you can tell that, right? Compared to other disabilities. 
Um, but for him, uh, I noticed a lot compared to him being eight and my daughter being 11, um, how early of an access that he had to technology and how that um, applies to his behavior and especially around instant gratification. So I was sharing with Pierre earlier how he asked me a question and um, especially if he's asking for something and instead of waiting for an answer, he will just answer for me. And it, and it kind of applies to a lot of things. Um, and I've noticed that. And I um, am creating a new podcast series that I want to discuss this topic on um, instant gratification in relation to uh, excessive abuse of technology uh, for our children. And I recently um, looked at an updated study uh, that showed that about seven and a half hours of a day are children the age range of eight to 18 are spending in. Um, so I'll kind of flip that. I said it backwards. Um, but eight to 18 year olds spend an average of 7.5 hours a day on um, entertainment while using their technology. So whatever forms your TV, laptop, tablet, and that's not even including how much time they're spending on a computer or a tablet at school while they're getting their education. Um, and um, if anybody, you know, if you're doing your studies on the use of technology, and I'm sure us as adults, as we are scrolling through our phones all night long, as we're updating our videos, you know, we always have a screen in front of our face at all the time. And that really does affect how our brain works. Um, I am not a doctor by any means, uh, but I do a lot of research, but it does really affect on how our brain works and um, just our mood, our behaviors. And um, you know, those seven and a half hours daily equals to about 114 days out of the year. So if you think about how much we are spending in front of screen time, um, just think about how much it really is messing with your chemistry in your brain. Um, and how you're thinking in your processes. So the study elaborates that um, the excessive screen time does contribute to sleep um, disturbances, ADHD and ADD and other behavioral disorders that students can um, exhibit, which will negatively affect their executive functioning. So that's, you know, how quick they're thinking, their processing skills, um, or their sensory motor development. So you think about it, my daughter, she's 11 years old, she's in fifth grade, and she had to do a lot of handwriting but she's not used to handwriting all the time, right? So um, she's used to being on her phone. So she complains all the time how this hurts her hand, things like that, and then other learning skills. And so not getting long-winded into the effects on the brain, but you gotta come back around and think, well, you know, how is it um, affecting the student's learning uh, in general? Um, how is it affecting how we are in general? Um, and also how does it apply to our focus, our attention, and also the demand aspect of, of things. So that kind of loops back to that instant gratification. Um, we're used to seeing so much imaging, so much videos, so much just so quick in front of our face, especially if these students um, or we are just watching, you know, Instagram or any other social media, um, we are absorbing so much um, in such little time. And um, also, you know, your brain is developing. So our children that are younger, you know, from um, your three year three year olds to uh, you know elementary, they those are the times that they're really their brain is developing. They're really soaking in that information that they're getting, um, but they're also getting the information very quickly. So I bring that up to say, you know, with the instant gratification that because of how fast things are coming at people, our children don't know how to slow it down. Um, and, but then they're also applying this to just their day-to-day -day lives and the things that they want. Um, so that's kind of where I'm coming at from that sense on instant gratification. And um, I have some other uh, topics that I'd like to loop into that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I'm sitting here and as you're talking about the, you know, the staying up and, and the brain functions, right? I'm, I, what I did is probably about two months ago. Um, mm -hmm. like I wake up in the middle of the night, like just wake up. Like if I sleep for like an hour, two hours, I'm just going to get up. And I always said, man, I got a problem going back to sleep. But what I was finding is I was grabbing my phone and I would look at it, even if it was to see what time it was. And then I find myself, I, I say, I got an email and I'm looking at the email. Next thing you know, I'm looking at some other stuff right now. I'm watching the video and mm -hmm. now I can't go back to sleep. And I'm like, man, I just hate to sleep. No, I started to stimulate myself and right away. Mm -hmm my mind just wanted to flick my thumb. Right. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, yeah, I want it now. And now I'm, I'm wide awake. I don't woke myself up. So what I did mm -hmm. is I said, okay, cool. When I wake up, I'm not going to touch the phone. I'm just going to lay here 
and I find myself going right back to sleep, right, right. back to sleep. Right. So now I'm up to where I'm sleeping. Uh, I'm touching seven hours, right? I'm touching seven hours a night when I don't touch my phone. Uh, and then probably about an hour before, like, I'm like, I don't even want to pick the phone up. I don't want to touch it. And what a difference. Like I noticed right. a difference. So when you started saying it with students, I'm instantly looking and saying, okay, this is what parents are doing, picking mm -hmm. the phone up and scrolling and watching video. So when your kid's doing it, it's normal. Now you're all in the loop. And now mm -hmm. they're doing it and they're not bothering you while you scroll. So it's no right. big deal. You're just letting them scroll, but you're not seeing the long-term effect, right? Right. So mm -hmm. y'all know me, man. I'm always looking at sales, right? And everything is sales. When we learn to sell ourselves to put the phone down and see what the benefit of it is to us, mm -hmm. we now sell ourselves on, yo, this is really hurting me, right? This is really, really damaging. And now I'm selling my kid on the same thing. So sell yourself on the fact that it's really no good. And then right. you can help to sell your kid on it. Because even with videos, mm -hmm. I notice when I'm watching a video and it's like 15 minutes long, what happens is when I get about five minutes in, I can feel the anxiety building up. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, this video got to hurry up. But yeah. I'm saying to myself, like, yo, why do you want it to hurry up? The video is a good video. Right. And now I find I found myself fighting with myself, like really having a battle, like, yo, don't change the video. It's good. You're mm -hmm. just, you're just having anxiety because you're used to the fast videos. Yeah. Right. And that's why they got like reels and 60 seconds, 30 second clips to keep mm -hmm. you going. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. telling you, man, when I figured that out, when it hit me, I said, yo, you, you got to slow down and yeah. what a difference. Now the anxiety is not building up in five minutes. I'm really up to about 20 something minutes right now. And then I'm like, yo, this video, I'm checking the time. I find myself checking how much longer for this damn video. Right. I want it to be over. You know or what I mean? Or for it to get to the point. Yeah. Like to, to get, get to, to the point. point. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, <laughs> yeah. No, go, go ahead. Cause you, you hit it. I, I want them to hear you. Cause you got me over here thinking about it. Yeah. Sorry. So, you know, that's kind of how my brain thinks. And it's exactly all those sentiments that you're saying is exactly how I've kind of thought about things. It's the same thing with scrolling. Right. And we all know the algorithm, it kind of gets you in a, a pattern on purpose to, to, keep you wrapped in of what ha what is happening. I will say the most frustrating thing about certain videos is if you're watching them and you're waiting for a result, say you're watching like a hairstyle for me, you know, I do my hair all the time. And it's like, you're watching a hairstyle video and uh, they'll bring you to it, but then they don't show you the end. And I'm like, so I just sat here for four minutes watching this video and I still don't get the result. So that's kind of like an instant gratification too. thing, you know, you know, cause you just, you want, you want the final result and you want it quickly. Um, and I, um, that even applies to even me, like I want a new car and I want it now, but the old me would have done that. But the new me now kind of thinks of these things like, okay, it's going to cost more money. I'm going to have a longer car note, like, you know, all the things. Right. And with our children, they don't really think about that um, necessarily because they, what they see now in the technology that they're watching and, and all the things that are streaming is instant access. Like they have very quick ways of getting things without, you know, much work. Um, they have very quick ways of um, just having tangible um, equipment in their hands. If it's, you know, because we're in 2023, technology is uh, very prevalent. Um, and, you know, those who couldn't maybe have it in the past, there's new ways for them to have it now. And, I find, again, that it's um, just a, a super interesting. I kind of been doing my own like little study, just using my own children. I kind of call them my guinea pigs a little bit within my research yeah. about even the difference, again, like I was mentioning earlier, between my um, eight-year-old and my 11-year-old. You know, my 11-year-old, she might have not got her first tablet until she was probably about five, but then my son had his when he was three. So, and, and they're about two, two and a half years apart. So typically when one got one, something, the other got something. Um, and I just noticed how big of a difference just because of development of my my son, um, especially my son, um, you know, being uh, um, having autism and how his tablet is sometimes like a third like arm. Like he's if he doesn't have his his tablet, he is missing, you know, a part of him. And I really recognize that um, very uh, firmly about two years ago, how having that in his hand um, and just because of what he was able to access on it um, was part of how he kind of navigated his his life. So I kind of try to take that into consideration 
um, you know, when I'm cutting time and what is the, what does he really want from it and how can he use it? And I think um, as we kind of, you know, continue the discussion, if we're thinking, why do we have instant gratification? Like what is the, the need or the desire to have a, a quick answer? Um, so I'll, I'll put my educator hat on and, you know, just give you a little definition that um, uh, with instant gratification, and I found a really cool article from uh, Parenting for Brain com and it talks about instant gratification or immediate gratification is the urge to satisfy a craving without considering its long-term effects or bigger picture and we live in an age of instant gratification um, which again 2023 we really do and then I kind of flip it I always do well what's my version of instant gratification and for me as an adult who is a I will say an addicted to caffeine and coffee and that's like my thing every day and if I don't have it like we're gonna have a problem type of thing. And so uh, for me, when I think about instant gratification, you know that it's an instant boost of dopamine and it's satisfaction. It gives you some feeling of fullness or a sense of security even. And for a lot of children and students in our teens, our adults, me and you day to day, we leave our house without our phone. We're like, uh, nope, I'm turning around. We gotta go back and get that because what happens if I miss this email? What happened if I miss this phone call? What, you know, all the things that go goes with that. And it all really is tied into having an immediate response to whatever it is that we're thinking about or wanting. Um, so again, it can be tied to so many different things. Um, and this is why I really love this uh, conversation um, around these two in, in particular. You know, when, when we're looking at instant gratification and it's the, I want it right now, I, I don't, I don't want to wait for it. One of the things, like I, I was real, 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 real bad with it, right? And I found myself mm-hmm. taking a lot of shortcuts because I, I, I like, like when we talk about a problem, but I also want to make sure that people got a solution behind it, right? Mm-hmm. And, and there's ways to overcome it. And this is just, and w- the way I do it might not work for me. I mean, it might not work for you, but you mm-hmm. got to find a way that makes it work, right? Whatever it is, there's no right or wrong way. But when when I had that feeling of, I want it now. I want it now. And I would take shortcuts, right? Because that's what it is. When you want it now, you take a shortcut. You want energy instead of eating right for the next 30 days. So your body builds up natural energy. You go to the coffee every day, every day, every day, right? And then before you know it, one cup don't work, you're on two and you're on three, or you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're throwing down a bunch of energy drinks. And, and this is what happens, right? So I started to look at it and remind myself like, yo, all your life, you took shortcuts. Every time yeah. you took a shortcut, you had to go in reverse and not only fix the shortcut that you took, but you had to fix all the damage that taking that shortcut created. Yes. Right. Yes. So when I'm looking mm-hmm. at instant gratification, like I just want it right now. I don't care about that stuff. Just give me this. Great. What am I going to have to fix by doing this? Right. I'm really slowing life up. So I just want you to look at it and think about, okay, yep, I'm impatient, but how many times have you been impatient, took the shortcut and then had to go repair everything <laughs> right. in back? You know what yeah. I mean? And when you start exactly. to think about it like that, it makes you be like, yo, it really wasn't worth it. So my anxiety, mm-hmm. it, it, like if I'm walking down a, a long hall, right? The, the hall's long. Mm-hmm. I won't walk with my head up. Not because I don't want to keep my head up, but because I start getting so anxious because I know I can't get there any faster unless I run, right? Or if I drive. But if I'm walking, I put my head down because now I'm only focused on one foot going in front of the other and it helps mm-hmm. to relax me. But the minute I look up, oh my goodness, man, I feel my chest get tight. Like, I'm like, man, I just want to get there. So whatever it is for you, stop looking at the end result and start looking at the next step in front of you, whatever that is, right? So you got a big project, take the big project and break it down into a bunch of micro pieces. Is it Mm -hmm. micro? Yeah, micro, right? Yeah. And then break it down into the micro pieces and then the macro, that the macro is the big one. Mm-hmm. Right. That, that, I, and then you're going to get to the macro. So yeah. but if you're just looking at the macro vision, the big vision, yo, it is so frustrated. And this is why you get that anxiety of I want mm-hmm. it now. So just break that thing down, man. I promise you, like it, it's a huge difference. I, I noticed it worked for me. It does. Yeah. And that is that's a great like tool to use. And again, you know, it really does lead um, that that kind of instant mindset thought process, it really overall does lead into procrastination. Um, and it also, you know, reduces your motivation and your willingness to kind of engage. So um, when you're thinking of those long term tasks, especially with their children, if they're trying to complete projects, they're trying to complete, you know, long 
per paragraphs or essays or things like that. They don't have the patience one, which is kind of reverse of instant gratification, which is kind of ironic. Um, and they don't have the stamina to really sit and focus in, um, you know, lengths of periods, 15, 20, even 20, 25 minutes. Sometimes these kids can't sit still. And so for me, again, it's just very interesting to kind of look at that and watch how the use of technology actually does add to the frustration of of wanting something you know i want it i want it now and that has been a mindset for many years and generations it's nothing new but again as we're um just progressing more in, within technology and how how fast things come at us it's they we want it and we want it now so i'm asking the question you know as parents um within my next podcast um as parents you know are are you mindful and you're watching how your children are using technology um again you know i kind of pay attention to my children and i monitor their phones i very much limit i don't know if you guys know but instagram tiktok youtube they all stream the same reels over and over and so if you think you're getting rid of oh they don't have instagram but they have tiktok or they have youtube it's all the same stuff so um you, i just try to be very mindful of that um and i also ask the question and this is in the education uh, sector this is at home with parents are you giving your children um technology as a resource or are you giving it for them to kind of get out of your hair and uh you know kind of so you can get stuff done. And of course, we all do both, right? And we utilize our own personal devices for both things. And as I always tell my kids, you don't need to be on technology, get outside, but I'm sitting on my laptop all day. You know what I mean? I try to justify that to say, well, I'm working and it's this and it's that. So I really try to implement um, healthy usage of technology with my children. Um, I didn't realize until a couple years ago how and then Gleck Boy was as a parent um, having that in front of their face over and over again until I went post COVID. So we know that COVID was a really mm -hmm. big um, extra boost into technology and how it's applied to our everyday lives. And, you know, I really just tried to um, monitor and, and again, make sure that they're getting a healthy dosage of being outside and playing, being active and reading a physical book like a digital book is great, right? If your child struggles with reading, that's awesome. But they're still right in front of the, the screen and something is either reading to them aloud or they can kind of skip through it and you don't really know. So something tangible, you know, get them creative, all those things. And then that will kind of bo boost their patience. It will boost their um, stamina to be able to focus on something at one time instead of constantly seeing things and having the answer. Uh, calculators, no, we do mental math here. So let's try to uh, try to keep focusing on those types of things. And that's kind of how basic it is, right? Calculators are that instant gratification when you're doing math problems or adding your taxes together, but we could sit there and do it with our minds, um, but we choose not to because it's easier to do other things. You, you uh, know, I, I found technology. myself, right, with, with the, the instant gratification when I'm working on something, right? And, and I'm much better now, but this was like a huge struggle. And I'm talking like just months ago, right? So I don't want people to think like, yo, this is years. And like, no, this is a, a everyday struggle when I'm working on something because of the social media, because of strolling, because mm -hmm. of so many things coming at you so fast. When I'm working on something, I find multiple things jump in my head at one time, right? And I got ADHD mm -hmm. bad, like through the mm -hmm. roof, right? And yeah, things would jump out at me so fast that I'm like, I can't even focus on the one thing I'm working on. So I got to shut everything down, like everything, mm -hmm. right? there. Oh, everything shut down and I got to go into a reset. So I started meditating. And yep. when I go into that reset, the first thing I do when I come out is I say, okay, what's the one thing I'm working on? Right. Because I know I don't, I know nothing's going to happen fast. I got to put the work in. Right. So mm -hmm. I write the one thing down and then I break that one thing up into about five things minimum. I put it into a pie chart. And I break that thing up. So now when I want to jump around, I'm jumping to something that is connected to the main thing. So I know that anywhere I move, I'm focused on one thing. But yeah. I'm, I'm tricking my brain because my brain still thinks I'm jumping around and doing all this different stuff. But it's mm -hmm. connected to one thing. So you, you got to really learn how to rewire yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But don't cause more damage in the process. So don't try to right. rewire yourself, but keep scrolling. Like that's not going to work. Like, like just slow down and understand, man, if I, if I walk, but I mm -hmm. never stop and I continue to walk, 
I can still get to the destination. It was, I, I'm telling my age now, right? With, with uh, right. Bugs Bunny and the tortoise, right? Bugs mm -hmm. Bunny and the turtle. And yep. the turtle always wins because Bugs always. was always just dipping, speeding around, right? All over mm -hmm. the place. But the, the, the turtle stayed consistent. And because the turtle stayed consistent at a slow pace, won the race. That's that, yeah. yo, you know, I, man, I'll tell you, I look at cartoons now and I'm like, yo, that was the message. Like, I that didn't was. That back then. Like, I really ain't get <laughs> no, that. Don't. Yeah, no, nah, slow down. Slow down. You can yeah. still win when you're slow. Yeah. And that's so funny because, you know, I, I find it uh, just as a someone who taught high schoolers. Right. Uh, which is a wonderful age. And I loved it. It was my favorite. And then to my children and to and me thinking of how I was, you know, when I was younger, everybody wants to just be older. Everybody wants to be an adult. Everybody wants, you know, to have all the things. But it's like there are things that are attached to, to what happens when you receive all of those, um, you know, things in your life. And um, I think, again, it's just so important to to show uh, the level of patience and, and the patience can look like a process. Too. And like you said, writing it out, having a plan, um, what does that look like? And so part of my process um, and uh, a partner of mine had introduced to me, you know, before I give even my children their technology coming home from school, they need to go outside. They need to do some reading. They need to do something creative. And then you could be on your tablet or do your homework first. We have homework, any of those fun things. But then do you, then you get your, your tablet. So it's kind of like, okay, timeline, time framing things for you, setting um, certain chunks of the day to, to do certain things. Because I am a very, I, I will probably say I'm the queen of procrastination. And I say that um, in, in, in kind of a humorous way. I wish I wasn't, but that is the way I've kind of wired for me. I do uh, produce better things when I wait to the last minute, but I also can focus within that last minute, right? If I'm doing something and trying to get it done in a short amount of time. Um, but not everybody is wired that way. And so I think it's really important for us um, to even help them, um, our children as they're getting older, to really kind of help them with these processes and show them that, okay, things aren't this easy to get because I'm getting coffee doesn't mean you need to have coffee because you want to watch something now doesn't mean it needs to happen now, you know, so kind of just allowing them the time to take time. And as somebody who is guilty of doing this, just giving it to them. So they'll leave you alone and you don't want to do that because then it just makes um, all of, all of that um, habit habitual uh, into their brain, the way they're thinking, um, and again, that's like, okay, I want it. She's going to give it to me or they're going to give it to me. Um, and again, yeah, yeah, just keep bugging you. Like if I bug you long enough, I <laughs> it can does. get it. Yet you're only telling mm -hmm. me no, but you're telling me no yeah. right now. But if I create an emotion in you, mm -hmm. then I can get what I want. And that's so, mm -hmm. that that's so true, right? They learn, oh, mm -hmm. when they act like this, they end up giving it to me. But when they're feeling like this, there's no way I'm going to get it. So now how do I create yeah. that emotion? Yo, that's sales. You see what oh, I'm saying? Yeah, like, exactly. Like, yes. <laughs> that is sales to the, yep. to the T like yep. figure out how to tap into the emotion. So let's switch mm -hmm. it around. How do you tap into that emotion of your child? Right. How do you tap into that emotion of your student that mm -hmm. get that helps them to understand that when you do this or when you say this, nothing else happens until this is done. How do you yep. tap into that emotion? So now they know, and it's crazy too, right? I was playing with my daughter and we was playing and I was like, why you ain't doing it? How you know I'm not serious? She said, no, I know when you're serious. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what you mean? Like, what do I do? She said, well, I'm not going to tell you. I right. Said, you <laughs> she can't give me. away the secret. <laughs> yeah. She, she's like, dad, you, you can't, you, you, you can't duplicate it. Like it, you're, mm -hmm. you're either mad or you're not mad. Right. There's no in between with you. And I'm it's like, well, tell awesome. me about it. And she wouldn't tell me. And I'm sitting mm -hmm. here. So now I'm trying to figure it out. And I'm trying to notice when I get mad and what do I do? Yo, I mm -hmm. promise you, man, they are super smart, but we got to be super smart too, right? Yeah, and very perceptive. So, yeah, so that, that makes me think of this. When we're looking at technology and we we, see it, we, we talk about the instant gratification and people are like, yeah, but mm -hmm. they love it and blah, blah, blah. I get it. So, let, so let's flip it now. What happens if we look at it and say, okay, you're going to be on this, but I'm going to give you assignments, right? And the assignments mm -hmm. that I'm going to give you when you're on this is I'm going to ask you certain questions because right now you're on as a consumer. You're mm -hmm. always scrolling. Mm -hmm. What is making people scroll? I want to get you to start looking at it now in a way where, wow, this is how they're tricking me. This is what they're making me do and paint the picture mm -hmm. for the child, right? And the kid's going to be mm -hmm. like, yo, I'm doing it because it is great. What can you make people keep flicking 
right? What can you mm-hmm. make them keep scrolling on? That's going to give you money. That's going right. to take care of you financially. So now we can start to look at this thing a little different. I'm not saying take technology away, but right. if you're just on and saying, yo, I'm just going to be a consumer, a consumer, consumer, and I'm just going to keep dumbing my kid down. That's backwards, right? right. Let's mm-hmm. let's figure out how to sell them. So they say, I don't want to be the consumer. I don't want them to take mm-hmm. advantage of me like this. I don't want every time I see something to say, hey, let me watch it. Hey, mom, can you buy this? Dad, can you buy this? No. How do I get other kids to scroll on my stuff, other parents to scroll on my stuff and stop buying the stuff that I'm putting on there? You know what right. I'm saying? Now we're looking at it different and we're out of that yeah. consumer mindset and we're in a producer mindset. You know, and so that's funny that you said that. So a big thing I really brought up to my daughter is I I just noticed her one day, and this was a couple months back, just scrolling and scrolling. And I'm like, what are you watching? And she's like, you know, I'm watching um, videos just on how to make things. And I'm like, why are you just watching it? And she's like, well, because I like it. I'm like, why aren't you making it? And she just looks at me and like, well, I don't know. And the funny thing, she wanted to make clay bracelets, right? I brought $300 worth of materials to make some clay jewelry and bracelets. And she did it one day, two days, maybe. And what happened? Oh, I couldn't get it. It doesn't look like the picture. And I don't want to do this. And she doesn't really pick it up anymore. And I have to just remind her, like, so you are interested in what they're doing. And all you're doing is sitting here watching it, and you're not even doing it. And so I try to kind of I know it's a little bit of a mind game, but try to make her self-aware of what it is that you're doing. I said, one, you're making them money for liking their video and they're making money because some people buy their product. I said, two, but you could be making money if you were making these and then you sell it yourself. And so she always asked, how can she make money to to get things? I'm not a per- I, I'm probably considered a, a bad mom because I don't give allowance money to my children. You're going to clean your room. That, that's just your room. You know what I mean? Um, so they always ask those questions because again, they want things. They want it all the mm-hmm. time. And I, I, we're, we got to set uh, goals and how, how to get there. Because the way mommy's money doesn't come easy. So <laughs> they have to understand that. And again, it all circles back to all right, of that. So, so one, one of them things, right? Number one, yeah, no, it don't come easy. So we, we're going to work together, right? Um, yeah, mm-hmm. Your job is to, is to go to school and clean up. That, that's how you mm-hmm. pay your bills. Um, right. But so to, to look at it, right? When we're looking at it, it gets hard. Like we see the finished product and we're like, mm-hmm. I want to create that. One of the things I started doing, and even like on my own YouTube page, if you go to the first video I ever did, um, it's horrific, right? And then you go to, I think, the second one, you had crickets in the background because I was in the garage and it's echoed mm-hmm. and the, the camera's messed up. It was on one of them little yeah. hand. Uh, it was terrible, right? Everything about it is terrible, like the first few. And when you look at it, I always take my son and my daughter and I say, okay, cool. You like that? Let's let, Let's take them all the way back to the beginning. Let's go see mm-hmm. what their earlier days, what their earlier work was like. Let's go mm-hmm. see when they were struggling, when they was just learning and the work is not the quality it is now. Because what we do is we tend to focus on what we see, right? That instant mm-hmm. gratification. This person been working on it for the last five, 10 years. And you yeah. think because you put in an hour, two hours, your work's supposed to look like that. No, it's not. Your work is mm-hmm. looking the way it's supposed to look. It looks like somebody who's just getting started. You know what right. I mean? I was talking yeah. to someone and they're like, yo, man, like, man, when you speak, like, man, I want to be able to do this in the room. I want to hold the stage like this and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, how long you been doing? Man, it's been like a month. A mm-hmm. month. I'm like, yo, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like a month. I'm like, bro, if you was doing 24 hours a day, seven days a week for a month, you're still not there. I got yeah. hours of this. You know what I'm saying? Like, this yeah. is 10 years. What you see right now is 10 mm-hmm. years expressing yourself, putting the stories together, putting the points together. This is 10 years in the making. Like right. you're just getting started. Go back and look at the beginning. I can't even watch them videos. It's hurt, it hurts my ears, right? So yeah. we got to start to look and say, this is what you see. But mm-hmm. let's go back. Let's let's follow the timeline. And let's see when yes. they first got started. And let's look at how they improved over time. Are you willing mm-hmm. to do that? Are you willing to right. say, you know what? Yep, my day one ain't supposed to be perfect, but I, I, I'll be better next month. I'll be better than I was this month. And if every month Mm -hmm. you can get better, every week you get better, come on, man. Like that's where now we start to see how we broke this thing down into little pieces and we grew together and we're actually doing it with them, right? Like I want to sit down and do it too. I want to craft, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to show you how I mess up, how I'm not perfect. Yeah. And then Mm -hmm. you're going to show me yours and then you're going to do something better than me. And I'm going to be like, oh, I'm going to big you up. Why? Because I'm selling. You see what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? And then you have to sell it. 
Oh, absolutely. You better sell it. Yeah. It's the only way it you works. have to. Yes. And, it, and, and, you know, it's such a, again, it's such a, a wide range on how this, uh, these two topics again, relate and how they can be applied everywhere. And again, how are you selling it? And what, what's the benefit and the reward for the patients or actually doing the work? Um, and so I want to touch on really quick, um, which I, I just, I don't know why I laugh about it, but chat, uh, you know, the, the AI chat, GPT, yep. all of those fun things. It's amazing. It's a fun tool. And, you know, it's basically kind of Google on steroids. Um, it's everything that kind of gets pulled, you know, up, um, up at once. What is that? Immediate instant gratification. Bam, you got your answers. Is it a good resource? Of course it is. Is it the best resource? Sure. Yeah, you're getting the answers. But do you actually know? Do you know the research behind it? Do you know the facts behind it? Do you even know if the answers are actually true? Or are you just thinking like, oh, that that's that that's what it says. It has to be real. Um, and I only bring it up because, you know, that's such a big thing, even within the education world on um, in a taboo and in different worlds in general. But in education, I've um, I kind of struggle with it. Like I like it as a resource uh, for our mm -hmm. students to be able to utilize, especially if they struggle with researching in general. Uh, reading comprehension is a very big struggle. Um, and on average, most of our high school students and actually in the adults in the US have a sixth grade reading level. Um, and so a lot of students, when I was teaching high school, they're in high school, maybe at a fourth grade reading level. And so that comprehension is um, limited more when they don't even have to read the words. They don't have to even find the definitions of anything. Um, and something that kind of intrigued me yesterday, which is going to be another topic sent, um, in my uh, podcast is in I'm in this ed, uh, education group on Facebook, and somebody was posting, you know, how do you utilize um, AI in your classroom? And so all the teachers are giving their answers, right? And the funniest, and I say funny, it's kind of concerning. Um, but a teacher put in there that I use AI to create my lesson plans. So my administrator will get off my back and I could just give it to them. And, and it just checks the box. So they'll leave me alone. And I was like, smart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you probably killed about a week's worth of work. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when you kind of think big picture like that, and this is where I kind of get deep into my personal opinions on um, education just as a, a system, right? And what is allowed and not allowed. I've always been known as like the stickler. I kind of nitpick on things. But again, you're not going to buy a car that is not quality, right? You're, why are we going to do things that does not produce quality and then pass it off that it's okay that we're utilizing and, and just using what was given to us instead of working, putting our own thoughts into these things. And so, um, you know, that kind of really uh, struck a nerve with me because, and it kind of goes back and forth. I won't get into that argument about teachers being certified and all of those things, because we're all going to have our different opinion. I come from an alternative background. So we want to have that conversation. You guys can put in a form to, to have that conversation, we'll, we'll do that. But, um, you know, uh, it's just really interesting when people can just get, again, instant information, have it, have it ready, and then pass it off. Um, so I kind of challenged that, that um, statement back. And I asked, you know, what do you do to actually make it authentic? What do you do to tweak or edit what was spit back out at you from the AI um, application and then what are you doing to actually follow up and look through the research because depending on what you're looking at it could be factual and it couldn't be and a lot of people even when it, we come to google they don't know that there's a google scholar which is actually certified information versus a google that's just anything that's put out you know mm -hmm. that could be factual or not and not everybody knows fact checker not everybody knows what to actually look for so it's kind of concerning you know things like that. So if you think that a teacher is purposely using this to just give to kind of get away instant gratification, I don't have to do it, they're going to be happy because I got it. Now think big picture, what does that trickle down to to our students, to our little students? And then if you're a parent, how are you using certain things that are just so quick to kind of just get out of doing the work? And then what does that look like? What can that turn into? And what negative habits can you establish from um, having that mindset. When, when you when you started talking about it and giving examples, the first thing that I thought about is when the, when the remote control hit the hit the streets, 
the remote control for the TV, right? Yeah. So I, I, my mom used to call me in the room. Yeah, come here. Ch change that channel for me. Put it on this. Mm -hmm. And I'm changing the channel, right? And mm -hmm. then the remote control comes out. And she didn't have to call me out the room to come change the channel. Like, she get up right. sometimes herself, right? A lot of times. But then at nighttime, you know, if I'm up running around, I got all this energy. Yeah, you got all this energy. Come in. Change that channel for me, right? Mm -hmm. But now she's sitting there. She's changing the channel with the remote. I'm changing the channel with the remote. The exercise goes down. You're not, right. you're not moving the same, right? So now before you had to change the channel and when a commercial came on, you sat and watched the commercial and versus the commercial comes on now, you flip to something else and then you flip back. So you're still that attention, right? It, it, as you're saying it, I'm like, wow, we was, we was slowly getting away from this the whole time and always having these little quick fixes. But when we're looking at it and we say, man, that, that remote control came and it slowed life down. Well, sped mm -hmm. it up, right? It sped it up because now you can do more stuff in between from a further distance. You can be in the other room changing the channel. And that's what I started to hear mm -hmm. as you was giving that, giving that example. Instantly, yeah. I, I just thought the remote control. And I'm like, wow. There's Isn't so many that basic? The basics. <laughs> well, but that's how basic it can be. Uh, and that's how it starts, right? You know, and yeah. It, it's, yeah. So... There's obviously a lot more we could go into uh, to that, but that's the premise of what where my thoughts come from and how they apply to education. But again, it applies to the business end and the sales end it, and just in, in life in general. So uh, certain things need to be patient uh, to wait for and get uh, certain things. Sure, you know, you can have instant gratification for a lot of things, but what is the benefit when you do wait um, or actually take the process to complete something on your own? Um, and mm -hmm. what does that reward look like versus all of that at you all day long? It's exhausting. I can't stare oh, at a screen more than an hour a day. Um, or not an hour a day. I, I will say in a session because <laughs> the job that I do and the work that I do, you know, we're behind these screens all day long. So, you know, we got to get used to it. But um, I prefer not to if I can. Um, but yes, yeah, so... That's kind of where I'm at and where I'm thinking. You were talking about the uh, the AI, right? And, mm -hmm. and chat, talking about chat and, mm -hmm. and using it. Like, I think chat has a purpose mm -hmm. and it, it it can definitely it can definitely make you lazy like the remote control. Because yeah. you're like, man, why do I got to do the work? I like the way it said it. Let's just run with it. Mm -hmm. But now the creativity that you have, you start to lose you. Right. I'm, I'm exactly. so I'm so into me that mm -hmm. when I create something and put it together, I'm not I'm not losing me for something else. But I right. didn't notice something that chat does for me when I have an idea and I write my idea out and I have it and I'm putting it together because I write the way that I talk. Sometimes, depending on what I'm sending out, a proposal or something like that. Right. It doesn't it's not right. It's not, it, it shouldn't be sent the way that I talk because right. the way that I talk is way different. So I take that whole piece and I put it in the chat and I see mm -hmm. how they correct certain stuff. And I'm like, oh, I don't like that. Like that sounds nothing like me. I still don't want to lose me, but I'm taking yeah. what I have, my creativity, I'm putting it in here and I'm just having them rephrase it based on a, a, a writing style that, that fits such and such. I don't want right. your information. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want your information, um, but I'm going to take it and I'm going to look at it and I'm going to see what you have and I'm going to make some adjustments. So I make sure I keep my voice and I keep my point. Right. right. And how I feel about what right. I'm presenting, because it's still me. I don't want you to read something and then I present. You're like, yo, that's not what we read. I wanted right. to I wanted to really mirror me. Right. That's one thing. The other thing is I take something and I write it and I'll give it to chat and I'll be like, yo, can you give this a title? Because. I don't really see the titles. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. coming up with a name or um, a title for something and a subtitle. I, I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't, I, that's not yeah. my thing. So I'll frame right. it, I'll put it in there. It'll give me a subject, it'll give me a title. And then now I'm able to take that and be like, okay, that title sound cool, but let me go ahead and flip it just a little bit and mm -hmm. add this little word or pull this little thing out. And I'm like, cool, that works. Right. But I'm always keeping my creativity in there. And I think um, it's, it's, it's real easy for someone to get lost in chat that is already yes. naturally lazy. 
You see what I'm saying? Like, yes, it you're is. naturally lazy already. And you're like, oh, mm-hmm. that, oh, no, that did the work. No, it didn't do the work. Yeah. It, 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 it eased your pain. It gave you instant right. gratification. Yeah. That's what they're exactly. like. Yeah. I need to put together a curriculum for these two things. Yeah. Whoa, can you give it to me? Oh, I like yes, it. Yes, it can. Like, God, mm-hmm. that's not cool. Exactly. And yes, all, all of the above. <laughs> Absolutely. And again, like I was saying, it definitely, it's, oh, it just, it bursts my bubble a little bit, but it is important, like you said, to, to really um, adjust it to to your tone, to your pitch, mm-hmm. to the words that you're saying. And th- but again, these these students in high school, they know that. So what are they going to do? They're going to go in there and tweak it and use it, right? And of course, there's these new um, uh, systems that are out that can catch the GBT or the GPT, but you know that that defeats the whole purpose of 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 that. So now again, what are we doing? Extra work to to combat something <laughs> that we have. So okay, so I sorry, I kind of get on uh, uh extra subtopics sometimes and I'm trying to just keep it centered into this topic here, but um yes, it's just very important for us to be mindful of um those little things that we want right away. Um, and I like, and I've been doing a lot better with myself of asking the question, you know, is it worth having it right now? Um, is it, is it going to be better if I wait a little bit longer? Is it necessary to have it right now? Um, or is it just something that needs versus wants, right? We can get into the hierarchy of needs if we need to be (laughs) extra uh, uh, philosophical there, but, um, it's, it's very, a, a very, easy topic to kind of think about simple like you said the remote very baseline but it does get to as we discussed today this very high um, overarching issue where at the end of the day what I'm noticing in people is their attention span um, and just how they react to things very quickly um, or if they're just dissatisfied with something that they are just immediately um, frustrated and, and don't know how to you know manage emotions and things like that so Listen, I, yeah. I'll tell you, I, I I remember like when the microwave hit the hit the mm-hmm. seat, and mm-hmm. you can get your food warm in like two minutes, right? Like you're like, yep. yo, two minutes, high powered. You got, you know, what I'm saying, like, mm-hmm. what? But it tastes so much better when it's on the stove and you reseason yes. it a little bit, put the water in yes. it, mix it, you know, what I'm saying, and let it warm up that way. It tastes way better. But even though it tastes better, we'll still use the microwave, right? That, that, that tells you, like, yo, you just want it now, like. I, I don't, I don't know. Well, man. Some, I think sometimes um, we gotta look at some things, and and it's like, is this something that if I if I use the if I use the philosophy of I want it now, right? I want mm-hmm. it right, right, right now. We gotta ask ourselves, am I really ready for it right now? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, what what pain would it cause me if I get it? And right. this is why you you get you get a lot of depression now because mm-hmm. people say, man, I want it right now. But you're not even ready now because you didn't go through the buildup stage. Right. You, you didn't. You, you never. You never learned how to swim in three feet. You know what I'm saying? But now right. you jumping in twelve feet. You're like, I'm just going to sink or swim. But you're not built that way. So now mm-hmm. when you lose your progression, right? When you lose that advancement you have, you're so depressed. You're so frustrated because you couldn't keep it. Well, you can't keep it because you 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 shortcut every every step of the way. Like stop. Right. Ask yourself. Right. Can I deal with this? Can I deal mm-hmm. with this right here? Am I really, really ready? Or do I just want it because it looks good? You know right. what I'm saying? Like, ask yes. yourself the question. Yep. And a lot of people ask me like, hey, are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? And I'm like, mm, I would love to do that right now. And I'm like, but you know, the way that things are working, I, I don't think it's the best thing. And, and we always want the big, fancy, shiny thing at the end of the street, regardless of what that shiny thing looks like for us. But again, um, you know, like you said, what is it worth? Um, um, and what is it going to take to get to it? And once you have it, you know, what is even after what comes after that? And certain things, yeah, I had my coffee, great. I drink it. Great. I feel amazing. Awesome. But what's going to happen next? I'm either jittery from one because it was a wrong batch of coffee or, you know, I'm getting um, I'm losing my sugar level and I get a headache. So there's always pros and cons um, to instant gratification, regardless of how you look at it um, and regardless of what it's applied to. It's applied to so many things. Um, So for our children in, in particular, especially if you have little children and they're only babies, they're only two, three years old, don't have that electronic in their face all day long. 
don't get, they need sensory motor, they need all of these things because the earlier they are with the screen time, um, the earlier that you're gonna see these behaviors and these um, uh, disorders happening with our children, which affects their long-term educational goals. But this is this is where like I might hurt some feelings and I, I and mm -hmm. I don't apologize. I don't I do not I do not apologize for hurting your feelings if I hurt your okay. feelings, right? I want to mm -hmm. be clear. But Same. a lot of parents, uh, a lot of parents are throwing the technology in the kids' face because mm -hmm. they don't they don't have a value, they don't have a skill set to give right. them anything else. Yeah. Right? They don't have any real lessons to give them. They there's no value for for that. They don't feel as they don't know what the value is. I don't want to say you don't have a value. You do. You just right. haven't you haven't developed it. And because you haven't developed your value, you're still into the gossip. You're still into mm -hmm. the, the reality TV. You're, you're still into the nonsense. Right. You're still feeding mm -hmm. your uh, what, what is it? A dolphins. Right. You're, you're still yep. feeding your the, the stuff you got running around in your head. You haven't grown you to a maturity level that you can grow another young mind. So. Right. You, you try to rely on other things to grow the young minds and let mm -hmm. you off the hook. But what you're right. doing is you just keep dumbing down your generation. You keep dumbing down the yes. family tree. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. I, I, told, I yes. told my family, man, I told my wife my, and my son and my daughter, I said, listen, I said, yo, I, I think my family tree is real dope. I said, but mm -hmm. one of the things that I did is I mentally ripped off our branch and I replanted our branch. And the reason I replanted our branch is because I'm going to build something stronger from the roots, right? Mm -hmm. And the bark is going to be stronger and it's going to be bigger. And as we build off of this, we got to make sure we keep growing. It don't mean that our family tree is trash. No, right. it just means we're evolving. Like right. when you look at it, the first iPhone is not like the new iPhone. You see what I'm right. saying? It's totally different. Mm -hmm. Like everything, the model, this model car versus this model, car, like, yo, as time goes along, everything's supposed to improve. But if all mm -hmm. we're doing is keeping the same roots, the right. same roots, and we're just growing off of that, yo, that's garbage to me. You see what it I'm saying? It is. Yes, absolutely. And it, oh my gosh. So um, I'm sorry, Pierre, we might go over this 45 minutes, but uh, but it's so funny oh, because good. we think about, um, I love that you brought that up, like the family tree and um, as much as we don't know and think about it, a lot of the things that we do now does affect our, our future generations of, of families and people want to only think it's a uh, very financial money a uh, monetary it's not it's all ingrained just like your dna has if you're predisposed to for me i have bipolar runs in my family breast cancer all those things i'm predisposed right um so a lot of these things you pass on to our children so those habits um is something um that's very healthy uh to ingrain in you right now and kind of uh, switch around especially if you're somebody that wants to have children or you don't have children you know just how you're thinking and and, and how you are in this uh, time. Um, and so something else that uh, you made me think about uh, while you were saying that is, you know, our parents, even today's parents, right? And the big thing, I don't know how to do my kids math. I don't know how to read. I don't know how to, but are you still giving an excuse, right? Why, why are you not taking the time to learn how to read? You are on a cell phone all day long scrolling, I'm sure, social media, whatever, buying on Amazon. But why aren't you investing in your own self to practice and learn how to read? There's so many YouTube channels that teaches people how to read. There's so much adult education that's just online. And so for me, when I hear that as a teacher, especially when I was with my high schoolers, and the parents would come to me and say, I don't know how to, okay, that's, I understand. And then it's fine. And I'm not, I'm, and again, I'm not sorry either for saying these things. It's just how I think is we, we do what we want to do and we're going to learn the things that we want to learn that we're interested in. So why are you not interested in yourself? Why are you not interested in your children doing better or being better? Why are you not advocating for yourself um, or helping to make yourself better? And there's so many tools um, to learn math skills. Math's a little bit tricky, I will say. Just mm -hmm. I think the, the way math is, it's just weird. And if you're not being taught some of the simple skills and the, uh, the processes that they're doing now, you're not going to know. And, that, and I understand. But reading in particular, and reading is super powerful because so much is tied, everything we do is tied to reading. And it could be as simple as, even for children, if they're watching TV, put on the closed captions. 
Let them see the words with what is being said. Now, don't do that if it's something's in a two language. That's going to be confusing. You need to, if it's English, do English. If it's Spanish, put it in Spanish because what are they doing? They're hearing now auditory, visual, now reading. And you could do the same thing. Um, you can do the same thing as an adult. And so I really dislike uh, when I hear that response or I see uh, the complaints all over social media from parents like, why do I got to do homework with my kids? They're at school all day long learning and I want to just let them be when they're at home. Do you not understand practice makes perfect? Do we not understand to establish a skill and be proficient in something you have to practice it for X amount of hours a day, regardless of what that is? And why would you not want to elaborate and extend on what your children are learning at, at school? And you may not agree with the process or what it is, but again, it's kind of helping those kids to get in habit of practice and use. And if they're not doing homework, and this is the thing too, a lot of parents, I don't get homework for my kids. My school doesn't send homework home. Well, why aren't you asking for it? As the parent, you can ask, hey, can I get a packet? an extra copy of whatever it is you guys are working on this week. And it could be the same exact work. Why is that important? Because then they're practicing it again. And the kids are like, oh, I know I did this already. No, but do you know it? Let's do it again, right? Yeah. And so there's just so many levels to, to, to that sentiment. And again, with the instant gratification is you wanna just look something up and or have your teacher help them instead of you doing the work to help them. And it, it uh, for me, and this is a big premise that I'll talk about on my show is, is education does truly start at home. Um, mm -hmm. And if you feel that you are inadequate in a certain area, it is okay, don't feel shameful about it, but you have the tools, we are in 2023, and I know you're all staring at a phone right now, you have the tools to be able to help you get better in those areas. Um, and so we just need to take advantage of, um, you know, accepting what our, our struggles are and, and figuring out those uh, better ways to kind of fix those for us you know, it's, um, and uh, our children. Yeah, my, my daughter came home one day. Um, this is probably like maybe four years ago, and she had some math. And she gave she showed me the problem. She was like, Yeah, dad, I don't I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, cool. Let me see. So I sat there, I said, Oh, boom, boom, knocked it out, right? I said, Here, mm -hmm. this is how you do it, right? After I did my own examples, checked it all, made worked it backwards. I said, Yo, yeah. I said, Here, this is how you do it. She said, No, my teacher didn't show me like that. I said, What do you mean? Mm -hmm. she I said, How's she yeah. showing you? She was like, yep. like that. I said, listen. Take this, write that. Yep. These are your answers. Put it all together. <laughs> Come up with it. Show me the answers. I'll check them. She did it. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, they're right. She sent it back. Teacher sent it all back. That's wrong. We need it to mm -hmm. be done this way. And this is why. I, yes. Listen, I promise you, my first response was, what do you mean? Math is math. Like, now we got to exactly. do it. Right? And I, yes. I was pissed, right? I ain't going to lie to you. Yeah. I was pissed. And I said, okay, cool. The rules are the rules. I can't tell you to respect the rules if I'm not going right. to. So I jumped right. on YouTube. I figured it out. And I'm like, man, I got to go through all of these extra loops. These yes. little loops to get to the same yes. thing. I said, <laughs> yeah. cool. So we cool. went ahead. We worked it out. And, and we did it. And did I want to? No. But mm -mm. what I did is it wasn't about the math. I looked at it like, yo, I'm spending time with my daughter right now. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I'm helping yes. her to do something. Why? Because when she gets older and she finds her spouse and if yep. that spouse don't take time to spend with her the way that dad mm -hmm. spent with her, oh, you don't qualify. Why? Because yeah. she's looking for somebody like, nah, my dad never made them excuses. Oh, mm -hmm. no, we got kids like, yo, my dad never made them excuses. My dad just went and did it. So right. I, it wasn't about the math for me because I, if it was just about the math, I'm like, yo, figure that shit out on your own. I'm good. But she looked and, and I'm looking at her and she was like, dad, thank you so much. I'm like, yeah, baby, no problem. That meant everything. So you sometimes yeah. you got to find a reason why you're doing it outside the reason that you really should be doing it. You see what right, I'm saying? Exactly. I hope that makes yes. sense. Because it does. It does. Because and that directly, um, and that's funny that you said it too, because that's another topic that I want to touch on. But that um, parent engagement is a huge thing. It's a very mm. big issue in education. And, uh, and we can argue back and forth on whose responsibility it is for what in education, in the classroom, why relationships are struggling between, oh, I, I speak more on the public school side, okay, just to kind of give everybody a perspective, um, even though I've been in the private um, sector as well. But when we're talking public education, why is there such a disconnect between um, the parents at home or caregivers, whoever's tending the children versus the schools? And why isn't the communication so much solid? Because again, you're trusting, and I, I saw this, you are trusting to send your kid to a school, right? 
all these X amount of days of, of the school year, but are, do you know their name, the teacher's names, the principal's names? Are you going to meetings? Are you going to parent conferences? Are you showing up for your kid in their choir concert? Or are you like, um, I'll just be blunt, like my mother telling me I can't go because you're not, you don't have a solo, those types of things. Right. And I'm sorry, I kind of struck a chord, but it's very, very minor like that. And, and, um, that engagement piece is super huge from parents to to really um, work with their children and sit in with their children because I will promise you, as somebody who has experienced or when I was a child of, um, of a parent not being engaged in my education, um, you know, it, it it kind of goes with you for a while. And this is also why I'm in, in education um, and why I really am an advocate for my kids and their education. I stick up for them. I make sure, you know, I go to their IEP meetings and say, hey, my child needs X, Y, and Z. And if I learn that they are not getting what they need, no they have a legal binding document, you're supposed to be doing X, Y, and Z. So you need to know how to advocate for your child. And if you don't know how to, we have resources. I have resources, there's resources online. Um, so it's just all of those types of things. You have to be very active um, in our children, especially if you are sending them to public education, you have to have that partnership and that willingness to engage. And if you don't know something, you don't know a skill or a content, it's okay. Just either see if you can figure it out or find somebody that can help, um, help you help them. Listen, I, I'll tell you, done. you look at, you look at it right now, right? If, if someone just pulled up in front of your house and beat your horn and, and mm -hmm. uh, they could, they say, Hey, send your kid outside. You're mm -hmm. not sending your kid outside. Why? You're mm -hmm. like, who are you? I don't, I don't even know you. Mm -hmm. Well, the teacher, right? If you look at it, you, you, you can get online. That's the thing with the, with, with this YouTube world, right? And it's online. You see teachers getting caught being drunk all day, right? Doing things mm -hmm. that are just unethical. But you never sat down and looked the teacher in the face because right. they got hired for a job that needs people right now. And they just bringing mm -hmm. people in. Right. And they do the backgrounds and do all of this. But you haven't looked the teacher in the eyes like the person right. that is with your with, with your daughter, your, your son mm -hmm. all day long. And you haven't looked them in the eyes and had a conversation. But when they yep. send a note home or they call you. You're you're looking at your kid like the teacher did this and the teacher sent this no home. What are you doing? And you're getting on mm -hmm. your but you never you never looked at that teacher and and, and had a conversation to see right. how do they talk about your kid? Are they engaged okay. with their students? Right? Like you, you mm -hmm. you're getting information from somebody that you never even meant, and you're you're using that information to punish your child. I, right. I just think you as a parent got to sit down and you got to mm -hmm. know your teacher. That is mm -hmm. with your child all day long. And you're not going to know him just from a little conversation, but you can yeah. get a vibe. You can understand the way, like my kid, yeah. my son's guidance counselor, man, when he was in junior high, he went to the guy, they, they called me in. So I went in, sat down and we're having a conversation. He was like, yeah, you know, looked at my son. And he said, you know, I, I just, I don't think school is for you. You probably should be in a trade school. I, look, I said, whoa, like, mm -hmm. I said, Yo, what's wrong with you? Like, like, mm -hmm. like, like this is what you said to your, to your students? You're yeah. not going to do it to my son. Right. right. And, and my son looked at me like he felt comfortable. He felt confident. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, have you ever said this? Has he said this to you before? I didn't even ask him. I'm like, yo, son, he ever said this to you before? And he was like, nope, this is the first time, dad. And I'm like, yo, listen, don't you ever. Like, mm -hmm. and then I want to know wh wh where'd that come from? You see what right. I mean? But now when that, when my son come home and says something about the guidance counselor, I already know what I'm dealing with. Yeah, I have, I have an idea. Like you got to yes. get out. You got to get engaged. You got to mm -hmm. know. Stop just yep. relying on strangers to yes. give your to give your kids the best them. Because that, yep. that's not how it works. If you're not engaged with your own, don't expect somebody else to engage with yours. Yes, absolutely. That's a hundred percent. And like, I'll give you a quick demonstration. So, I've connected with oh, most of my kids' um, teachers, and at their school, they kind of shift around um, in the fifth grade to different math and reading, depending on their uh, academic level. And um, I did not meet my daughter's reading teacher yet. I'm very um, no uh, connected with all of both of my children's uh, teachers uh, that they have, but just this one teacher. And I learned that my daughter was uh, punished um, for looking for something during reading time in her bag. And this teacher knows that she has what is called a 504 plan. My daughter has ADHD and she struggles with focus um, and intention. So therefore she was digging in her bag, looking for something and, um, instead of the teacher, you know, going up to her, talking to her, uh, she says, Raina, um, since you don't want to read, you could just get up and read in front of everybody. 
and makes my child read a, a, a pretty lengthy page. Mm -hmm. But uh, she proceeded to tell me how that made her upset and she was embarrassed. She's like, this was the worst day of my life. And, and, and I, I even started crying a little bit. And, you know, I don't know that teacher. And I also don't have the right email for that teacher. And the mom in me was like, she did what? Like the educator in me is, she did what? Like, that is not supposed to be happening. And, um, and, you know, now I feel so bad, because that's going to be a memory she remembers all the time in her life, she might have a little bit of stage fright, um, getting up reading in front of somebody, she might not want to do it again. It's kind of like the little things like that. And like you said, had you not met, I don't know this person, this person does not mean doesn't know me. And I will tell you all the others that I've spoken to, they know that they if there's issues with my son, because he has behavioral issues, sometimes at school, if he had they have issues, call me, text me the day of, don't send me something a week later saying he did something last week. No, I need to know now. And if you need support from us, we are here because we'll address it at home. And we'll address it to make sure we're working with you to address it. And if I feel like it's a strategy thing that's not working with him, I'm going to provide you strategies. But us as parents, we have to know where our kids are academically if they are in a public school. And yes, we don't agree to standardized testing. And I, that's a whole other subject. But we have to know what are they capable of doing? Because why, again, I saw on social media, parents like, I feel so bad. My son's in high school and he's only at a third grade reading level. And how did I miss this? I didn't know. Well, what bet happened between third grade and ninth grade that you didn't know? That's six years of their educational journey. And you didn't know that your child was behind in reading. And so, you know, so we can, that that's as deep as it goes. But um, again, is we're expecting other people and other things to give us the answers instead of us taking charge of what is ours, like us or ourself or our child, um, and, and really trying to help them succeed in life. And that goes all into being a business person, selling things, working, all, all of the things. It just really, again, fundamentally um, is at home, and we need to really be paying more attention to what we're doing. Absolutely. Listen, I, mean, I, I had a great conversation and, and I definitely want to do it again. Um, yeah. I, I want to do it again just because I, I I love it. There's there's so much. There was so much in between. And I, I want to go back myself and, and listen and pull some points out and and really dive into some other things that was talked about longer. Um, mm -hmm. because you know, there was some stuff we just went over, right? But I yes. I really think that there's a lot of information here that over the last, you know, hour and an hour and 10 minutes or so, um, that, that was discussed. And I hope, I hope that y'all was listening. And I not not only just listening, right? Because we listen a lot, but I hope mm -hmm. that you're you're willing to implement, right? I yes. hope that you're willing to say, wow, this really made me think. What you know mm -hmm. what? I could be doing a better job. Like I look at it and I'm I'm listening. I'm like, man, what what where could I pick up? And my, my, my daughter's 16, my son's 23. I'm like, yo, what what could I be doing different like right now? You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it just made me think, like, where am I dropping the ball? So ask yourself, right? Two things. Number one, where where are you dominating? Where are you just mm -hmm. crushing it with your kids, right? And their education. Because you are crushing it somewhere, even if you don't feel like you are there, yeah. find that space where you crushing it with them. And then also, mm -hmm. also ask yourself, where am I dropping the ball? Where am I dropping the ball on my child's education? And, and I'm not putting it on the teacher. It's not the teacher. Right. I'm, I'm going to mm -hmm. go ahead and I'm going to take 100% responsibility. So ask yourself them two questions. And then the third thing is ask yourself, right, what am I willing to commit to changing? Right. What am I willing to commit to chasing, changing, fully commit? Right. Fully commit. So mm -hmm. my mentor said to me, he was like, man, uh, the cow is partially committed because you you can still get milk from the cow. Cow don't have to die to, to feed you. Right. Mm -hmm. But the pig is fully committed because in order for you to eat some of the pig, the pig got to die. Right. Mm -hmm. So what what do you need to fully commit to that is going to help you to improve your child's education? And watch this. The crazy thing is that it's, it's going to start with you growing you. And you mm -hmm. improving you so that you could be the Absolutely. person to help your kid grow. All right. Listen, man, I had a great time. I had a great time. Me too. Yeah, let's yes. we'll, we'll do it again. Anything you want to leave Absolutely. them with? Anything you want to leave them with real quick before we go? 
Um, well, thank you so much, Pierre. This is probably one of my first official podcasts that I have been uh, a, ho a co um, host on. So thank you again so much for having me on. I appreciate that. Um, please, guys, I am starting my new uh, podcast um, online. If you would like, I will share some information for you. Um, but it is called a peep into education through the lens of students, families and educators. I have a link up available at the virtual so educator. Um, I'm on link tree and all social media. Um, if you would like to join in our conversation with me and sign up for a podcast, I would love to have you guys on. Um, and again, thank you so much uh, for the time tonight. Absolutely. Listen, man, y'all have a great one. And remember, listening by itself.